All right. One of the amazing new things you can do with Betaflight presets is have your own preset library. So in the presets tab here, you can go up to preset sources and can actually make your own preset source where you can load all the diffs and whatnot that you want to have to load up your different quads just to make it easier to load in maybe your OSD settings or your favorite settings for modes, uh, for your different tunes that you like for different quad classes, really anything you desire. Well, in this video, we're going to go through how to set up your own preset library uh, using GitHub and forking the Betaflight presets that are there, cleaning it up and showing you a simple way to do that to really avoid the command prompt. We're going to all to use get desktop. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. So let's get into it. What we're going to talk about today is I actually have my own preset library here, which I set up and you can see here is the web link to the online uh, source of my presets. And then here is the branch and we'll talk about what that means for a GitHub branch and I can make that active. So you can see here in the background, these are the presets that are on the Betaflight official. And then I can hit make active to view mine and hit OK here. And then it will switch up and it will show the presets that are specific to me. And I can go ahead and change these at my will. So let's talk about how to get that set up for your own use. And so you can start entering in, you know, there's lots of different things you can have for presets, filters, LEDs, mode, rates, uh, RC links, so on and so forth. And uh, it really gives you a repository to start setting that up and also a platform that if you wanted to push some of that back to the official GitHub, you have a way to do that. So the very first thing you'll need to do if you do not have one already is a GitHub account. If you would just go to GitHub and G-I-T-H-U-B.com and I'll drop that link down below and you can go ahead and hit the sign up and then just create an account. Uh, you don't need anything special. It's free of charge. You can just do the sign up. I'm going to go through that. I already have an account and it's pretty straightforward sign up. I'm sure you've signed up for things in the past. I have a GitHub account, so I'm going to go ahead and log into mine. If you have one, of course, you want to log into yours as well. So once you're all signed in, you go over to this repository search here or you can go up to the top. And what you can do is just look in beta flight. Again, scrolling down here, you can see we're looking for this one where it's Betaflight presets. So if I hit firmware presets, that will take me to this Betaflight firmware presets. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and lock, drop this link down below so you have it and you don't have to go through that search thing if you don't want to. After that, we're going to simply go up here and hit fork. And that will, on your screen, uh, bring up a dialog where it's copying all the content from Betaflight's uh, source, you know, the, the, the repository, basically the folder that they have on the, on GitHub and it's copying it to your folder in the cloud for your GitHub account. And you can see, I have that done here already. The next thing you want to do is download GitHub desktop. So you can, I'll drop this link down below, but it's just desktop.github.com and go ahead, download that. You know, if you have windows or OS Mac, you can see the two here that are available for download and get that installed. I'm not going to go through the download installation process. It's pretty straightforward. Just download it, go to the next, 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 next to install it. And then you'll be set to go. So after GitHub desktop is installed, you're going to go look at your repository here and go to where it says code here and then copy this link. You can just click this button or you could highlight this and copy it if you prefer. You're going to open GitHub desktop and you'll, your screen will look a little different here than mine because I already been using it for a while. But ultimately, you're still going to have this file dialog to come down, drop that down, hit clone, and then we're going to go to URL and paste that in. Now for this next part here, you'll need to establish a local path of where it's going to copy the files down to your computer. So there's two things of copying going on there, right? We copied, we made a copy online, like in the cloud, GitHub cloud from, uh, from Betaflights, and we copied that to our account on in the cloud again on GitHub. So, and it's a copy, it's, they're not linked together in any way, meaningful way. The next thing we're going to do is now link our account to our computer. So it's much works just like Dropbox or OneDrive or Google Drive or anything like that, where we're going to have a copy of the files on our computer and also a copy of the files on the GitHub cloud. Now with OneDrive or Google Drive or all those, you know, Dropbox or all those things that remains synced automatically. Whereas you're going to use GitHub desktop to and click a button to actually sync it back and forth. So every time you click, it can it can copy stuff up or copy stuff back down, depending on which side you're editing. So it's it's very similar again to those cloud-based programs. It's just a slight difference, slight nuance, slight tweak to it. 
So just like those cloud-based platforms, you have to tell it where you want it to sync on your computer. And for me, I put it under my user name on Windows. And there is some advantages if you are going to start to get into coding uh, for building specifically on Betaflight using programs like Docker and things like that nature to put it under your user account. You can see I made a Git holder and then just M, you know, Spatzinger, which is like kind of my handle for my email address and stuff like that. And uh, then I have a folder here that it's it's going to give it the same name of the repository, which is firmware dash preset. So it's going to it's going to put it in that folder. So from there, I simply hit clone and clone is basically copy. So there's some of these terminology things. Clone is copy. Fork is also copy. Fork is copying in the cloud. Cloning is copying from the cloud down to the computer. Once you do that, you will get a prompt just like this. I would, uh, I, you know, I might say, oh, well, I'm just using it for my own purposes, but I would keep the door open that if you ever want to submit presets back to the main branch, that that's a, an option there. So I would select this first option up top here and then hit continue, which says, hey, maybe I want to contribute back and that you'd want that option if you did want to push some presets back up to the or submit them as a PR to the Betaflight master. Uh, firmware presets uh, for community use. At this point, you have now a copy of, you know, that repository on your computer at that location. You could browse out to it and see it. So for example, you can see I browsed out to here and I have it right here. And this is all the files. If I go under presets, which is the location for the presets in the repository, you know, on that started with Betaflight copy to your github account and now it's copied down to your computer down here you can see this is where they're at so if i go under tuning uh, you can see them all right here and this is the current ones at the time of the making of this video there might be more if you're doing this in the future if you uh, look under here you can see the different branches and we'll talk about that in a second and then this would be the button up here to sync up between uh, the different you know basically when it's going to sync between your GitHub account and your computer desktop. So if you make changes, you hit that button and push them up. If you have changes online and you want to bring them back down, it's you'd hit that button there again. Now there's another thing you can do with this tool is actually make versions. So we have these files copied down, but what I can do is make this thing called a branch where it's basically like uh, a, a different version of the same files. Yeah, and it's pretty cool. It, so you can have as many branches as you want, change a different branch and it doesn't change the master branch. Uh, so the master, uh, you know, uh, files that are there. So what I can do is I want to leave that master alone. And the first thing you want to do is go ahead and make a new branch. So you go up to branch here and hit new and then you type in whatever you want. So I'll just put in presets, UAV tech, uh, presets video and you can see here you know i can give it this name but it's gonna uh it will create it with you, you can't have spaces there so it will take care of that automatically for you and go ahead and hit create branch now that new branch that it created is just on your computer you can see here it has not pushed it or published it to github yet so i can go into that branch and for example let's just look at that that's the files that are current on the computer if i'm looking here right now which is the exact same copy so one of the things you can do with branches is if i actually go to the location of the files and say i just wanted to delete all these files i'll go ahead and hit delete here and delete all those files you actually see and when i click on github desktop it will register those changes now those changes are kind of like registered to take place uh, they're deleted on your C drive, but they're kind of saved in the background yet. So I could honestly come into here, right click and hit discard these changes, and then the files would show back up here. But say I want to keep those. What I will do is just, I have to put some sort of comment. You could say deleted files and just put delete or whatever and hit uh, commit. So that will actually kind of like commit that to being, to being so. And this thing is keeping track and history of all the changes you're going to make so you can see one of the changes i'm making to that repository is deleting those files well at this point if i switch back to the master branch you will see these files reappear magically reappear because it's that version of that directory under the master didn't have those deleted and then if i switch back to my branch 
where I committed those changes, then you'll see these files disappear again. So that's what I mean by the versioning of it. So again, we're gonna leave master intact. And what you might recommend doing, uh, what I did at least, is I cleared out all the, the different uh, presets in here that were not mine. Now, you may wanna put those off to the side if uh, you know, you're going to use those as a reference point on how to create presets, a little bit of a, you know, being able to look at those uh, as, to give you an idea. But the, uh, there are some things in here that I would recommend leaving, like the wherever it says default text, I would recommend leaving that because you can use that in your preset uh, to reset defaults for that thing. So like RC links, I can refer to this defaults and it would use that to actually do a reset to defaults for the RC link before it then applied uh, my changes so I would recommend just leaving those and also this git uh, keep so keep that as well so keep that maybe I'll delete this but keep the default here as well and just kind of clear these out or copy them off you don't have to but that's what I would do just to, to kind of declutter it a little bit so as you're deleting files in here, if you do it all at one file swoop, you will see the changes register over here. And like each set of changes you do, you will need to, you know, you can put in a description or just hit a period. You got to put something in there and then you can commit those changes to it. Uh, you will see that over on the history tab here, show each of the and every one of the commits that you make. Uh, you can always, uh, you know, revert a commit. Uh, undo a commit and it will will go back. So there's a lot of checks and bounds in this system and that's why it's used for programs. It's a really good tool for version control and that kind of thing. Ultimately, this is all well and good, but we haven't pushed anything back to your GitHub site yet. So if you would go and look at your repository, you're not gonna see this new branch, but to do that, we can publish branch and that will go ahead and push that up to the GitHub site. So now if you go into your repository specifically, uh, you can see under here, if I hit the drop down, I will now have this UAV tech presets. So now you're pretty well set. If you made some presets along that way and push those back up, you will have this GitHub um, link. So this link right here, this URL, will be the link of your repository itself. So you would take off this if you did browse to a branch and you would just have uh, this link right there, whatever that is for you, this preset, the, the repository link itself, just stopping at the repository name. And then the whatever branch that you used. So in this case, it would be dash video is what I would enter there. You can go ahead and hit save and then activate that. And that would be the branch that you would have to view uh, your stuff. So I'm going to just take that out because that's not the, I'm just using that as for a tutorial, but this is my official one that I've been using. So you'd go ahead and save that and hit active and there would be where you're at. But wait, right after you do that, uh, you're not going to see your presets show up yet yet because we have to do one more step uh, before they'll show up correctly. But you can see it's fairly simple to get to this step where you have this link and that GitHub branch, put it into there, hit save, make active, and then you should be good to go after you do this very next thing. And that next thing is download node.js. So node.js is kind of like a compiler kind of a thing. So uh, I'm gonna drop this link down below. It will take you to this website. Of course, you can come in and if you have oh, Mac OS or Windows, if you're a Windows user, I would recommend you know, the, probably the 64-bit uh, Windows installer MSI. Go ahead and download that MSI and install it. I'm not gonna go through that. It's pretty straightforward. You just download it, hit install, hit next, 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 next. I don't even know if there's that many prompts. And then uh, it installs. It doesn't really, it's kind of like a program in the background used for doing command line stuff, but we're gonna short circuit that because I have a nice little batch file for you. So after node.js is installed, the next thing you can do is I will drop this batch line text code down below. And it really, you're gonna have to customize it. I'll probably put something like, you know, your repository path here. You really need to, if it's on your C drive, you don't need to do this Z thing. I have like a Z drive where I put this stuff. But if it's on your C drive, you would not need this part. Um, you would just say CD and then put the path of your repository. It should not have any spaces in it. Uh, so um, try not to keep spaces in the path. 
just for simplicity sometimes it's just, the stuff doesn't like that if you do have spaces you might need to enclose it with uh, quotes just like that first uh, if you would do that but try try not to have any spaces in it and then the next two lines you installed node.js and this will call it this is like the command line stuff it's looking for so you would call you to cd for change directory you'd set the directory of you know put in the path here wherever you have this repository save the one we just you know made with um, that get desktop and then have these two lines how to make a batch file is pretty straightforward you just go over to file new and go ahead and hit a text doc and then just call it like indexer whatever you want to call it doesn't really matter and then type bat and then take off the txt hit enter hit ok and that will go ahead and make a batch file you can right click on it and hit edit and then that is where you would paste this code down into here or that you'd get down in the video description and then change this to be you know whatever you have uh, for your path maybe something like that or something wherever you put the path for this repository uh, from git desktop so when you have your presets in there now, the only next thing you need to do before it actually totally works with the Betaflight configure is you just need to click that batch file. And what that is going to do is it's going to check your presets and then it's going to do an indexer change. And when you do that, you should see if you've made change in the directory, it actually come up with a commit over here. So you can see it actually made a change to this index.json file that's in the same repository as the presets that, that you brought down and also you know makes a this uh, indexer hash.txt file so we're going to need to go ahead and commit those so you could say like index update or something like that and then uh, hit you know commit that and then hit push to push that up to your online github account and then after that when you go into the configurator and you know you may need to restart the configurator if you have it open but after you do that uh, you should see your presets come up every time that you make a change in maybe the description so if i click on this and you see the description i have here if you make a change to that description or add new preset text or anything like that you will need to rerun that indexer it's pretty straightforward right you just click that batch file after you're make, done making changes so you make the changes to the to the text files that are your presets double you know click that batch file it runs that and then hit the button to push it up to your github account and then next time you go to the configurator it will be there for you or if you bring up the configurator on your phone it will be there for you so not too hard so that's it for how to get it all set up to have your presets repository and get it linked into the configurator in the next video we will talk about how to actually make preset files edit the preset files uh, again fairly straightforward depends how far down the rabbit hole you want to get it can be as simple as just saving a diff all and uh, putting it in the directory so you have now a diff all that you can reload for a specific quad on if you have a new flight controller in there or whatever you want to do until then thanks for your continued support and we'll see you on the next one